Welcome back, friends, to the shop on this beautiful Wednesday afternoon on the homestead, the day we've all been waiting for. We're going to be cutting into the giant Doug fir burl. Had a hard time figuring out how to slab this uh, with what I had on hand. This is what I came up with. Let's go take a close look at how we set this up. Uh, we'll talk about the tools a little bit, and then we'll get the chainsaw mill fired up. This setup was a bit of a head scratcher. Now the obvious question is, why don't you use the Lucas saw mill? Well, I could easily do this with the Lucas saw mill. However, I wanted to do this uh, with the Alaskan because this one is more attainable by most guys. If you probably already have a chainsaw, so for a couple hundred bucks, you can get yourself a Granberg and you can mill, well, I milled a whole timber frame cabin with it. And I know other guys that have as well. So that's kind of why I wanted to go with this. So we have two problems, a couple problems here. First off, this is heavy, but not that heavy. So all of the force that's going to be exerted on the saw bar is going to move it around and we just can't have it moving around. So I've got a series of wedges and cribbing, different things that we kind of put up there. And on the back side, we actually screwed a two by four into the frame here, the pallet racking, and then a couple lags into this. So I hope that will keep it from moving. So once that's done, I had to figure out a way we've got to be able to raise and lower the saw for the slabbing, right? So we have quite a bit of adjustment, probably 14, 16 inches here in the Granberg. Uh, but the, well, the solution was to use, we just modified some old pallet racking. Now we can lower that down or raise it up, whatever we wanted to. So we can really, we have an infinite adjustability with the two things right there. Not only that, but we have nice, perfectly level rails uh, that we can use as a guide. So when we start slabbing, it'll be perfectly flat I'm hoping. The saw we'll be using today would be a 461 still with a 32 inch bar. That's about the smallest saw I'd go with with a, an Alaskan. Uh, ideally a 66. 660 is, is pretty hard to beat. If you're going to do a lot of milling, get a 660. If you want a saw that you can do heavy firewood and milling with, you're not going to do a tremendous amount, the 461 is pretty good to go. Got four loops sharpened up here ready to go. Ripping chain versus regular round file chain. Now on the right here is a regular round file chain and on the left is a dedicated ripping chain. Now, of course, chainsaw mills, you know, you're cutting along with the grain, so that's ripping that, and that takes a lot more effort, right? So the guys will tell you from the chainsaw mill side that you want to use the ripping chain. You see the difference immediately right here. Do you see the angle in which it's filed? It's much flatter, not near as steep, where the round file traditionally is going to be a lot steeper. Also, you'll see that this is a full skip, and I think this is a half skip right there, meaning that how many teeth uh, per inch or so. So you'll see some of the bigger saws and professionals will like to use full skip chains, get better chain speed and, and various different reasons. But what I have found, and I've used both extensively, I have found that it doesn't seem to make that much difference. I almost believe sometimes that it cuts a little bit faster with a traditional round file chain versus the ripping chain. With the ripping chain, I think you get maybe a little bit finished, nicer finished product. So if it's going to be something that's showcased and you don't want to do a lot of handwork or planing on it, that might be a better bet for you. So you might just try them and see, but it, for just most guys, your regular chain that you have is going to work just fine. This is a Granberg Alaskan chainsaw mill. If you're new to the channel, you may not be familiar with these. It's a simple guide uh, that you can buy and use with any power saw that uh, will give you the ability to make your own lumber. And to install your saw, it's quite simple. And the same process on the big ones or the small ones. You can, if you have small things to mill, just little, maybe just a windfall or clean up from the winter, you have a small saw, like a 16 inch bar, you can still chainsaw mill with that. With the saw installed, the only thing left is to make sure that you check your measurements here. Now this upright has uh, graduated measurements. It goes from zero to 13 inches. That's how deep you can cut. Our first cut went pretty good. That was just kind of a test cut to make sure that the jig was going to work and I didn't see any problems there. That uh, coarse chain you can see, or the regular firewood chain, it does leave kind of a coarse uh, finish on it. 
but uh, once that's planed and finished, it's going to be nice. So what are we going to make? Well, <laughs> we got some of you have requested a few billets for some pen uh, guys that turn pens, and we'll get those cut out for those of you guys who have expressed that interest. Uh, but our main thing is going to do one big slab across the whole thing of it to get hopefully um, some sort of a tabletop. So we'll see how it goes, and uh, we may be adapting the plan as we go. But let's set it for a second cut. For our first slab, we're going to lower this down from 9 inches to 11 and a half. Now that's going to give us a 2 and a half inch cut. Now why 2 and a half? Well, this first slab would be a really good thing for like a, a cheese board or a bread board, a live edged uh, platter of some sort. And uh, to finish up at two inches is a nice dimension. It's not something you see typically and it looks unique and it's just the right amount. Now we're set. Let's try this again. Looks like that chain started to jump off there. There we go. Boy, the smell of this dug fur with all this sap in it, it's just the most beautiful, delicious smell of all wood. I didn't quite figure right on my width. I can't get through here on this end. It's, it's just too wide. So here's what we're gonna do. We're gonna, we're gonna nip this off with a chainsaw somewhere somewhere right in here. Some of you more astute observers, notice I switched to a, a different Dolmar. These Dolmars are really good. Finally, someone's making something that's de decent. The Husqvarna, it actually has a safety lid that's pretty good. And the bonus feature here, so you unlock it, and when you fuel, you just push it in. And that spring compresses, well, it self-vents and it automatically shuts off when the fuel level hits the tip of the nozzle, therefore greatly reducing my gasoline spillage. How about that, huh? That, you know those Swedes? First Minecraft, now this. Amazing. Unfortunately for me, they don't have the same feature on the bar oil side, so there's still a very good chance that we'll make a big mess here. Bar, Ooh. <laughs> it's, deceiv it's deceiv deceiving. That last little bit, it always fills up faster than you think. But now here, what I typically do with these stupid quarter turn caps is I don't get them sealed and I pick my saw up and then I pour out the bar oil all over the ground. So that's not Still's best design there. We're still not down into the good stuff yet. Still got, you know, quite a bit of saw cuts, you know, deep cuts there from getting it off there. I think the good stuff's gonna be right down in here. That's where we're looking at a nice long slab for a tabletop. But right here, I think we have enough here for a nice a breadboard or a cheese board. So let's drop the leg. We pretty much maxed out now on the mill adapter. So let's drop the legs down uh, one hole. That will give us another two inch pass and then we'll uh, take one or take two and a half and then we'll uh, reassess.
going to have under here? Here's a fun fact for you professional homeowners. Your intake for the cool air for your saw comes in right here. So if you see that sucking or grabbing chips, make sure you keep that clear right there. That's why it's got a grate on it. Now we're getting down to the good stuff. We gotta be careful here. Okay, so we gotta set our, their, our next cut, I, I believe, is gonna be the top of our, of our table, of what we're really trying to, uh, to get here with this. So if we level off of that, we can see that our chainsaw cuts come down to about just shy of two inches. So if we set our next cut for two inches below the top right here, we should have a clean cut. Hopefully we went deep enough. I think it was just right. We're gonna see the top of the table together for the first, oh yeah, that's good. It's all one piece, that's a good sign. <laughs> we know we got through it. Oh man, this is exciting. Oh man, that is so pretty. You can't, it's pretty now in its dry state. Wait till you get some, something wet on there. So we do have some, oh, nope, there's some gouges right there from the chainsaw, uh, the tip where it just got in there, but that's okay. We could put this in the bottom. We don't need to, it's, there's no reason to waste any more of it. Wow, that is so pretty. All right, now we gotta figure out how deep we wanna make this. I'm thinking probably just under, it's gonna be just over two inches. All right, guys. This is it, this is the, the big money cut. I decided we're gonna do a four inch cut. Now, I don't want a four inch slab, but what you typically do with this, I can tell that there's, there's a lot of moisture in this, so it's gonna take a long time for it to stabilize. You'll wanna do build furniture with wet wood because it moves so much and all your hard work and your joinery will just all be for naught. So how it's done is you overcut it and then you let it sit, you crib it, so it's perfectly flat, it's in a shaded area, and you let it stabilize an inch a year. So that's four years. <laughs> well, I guess maybe it's from both sides. So yeah, two years, two years for this to cure. Once it's cure, then we can run it uh, through a planer or hand plane it, and then we'll have a stable piece that we can really do something with. So four inch slab, I'm gonna cut it now, we'll see it together. All right, friends, shall we see what we got? This will be the bottom. And what we, we're all gonna see it together for the first time. Put a little water on it, see if it'll bring out some of those grains. Oh, that's pretty. That is gonna be beautiful. Look at the swirls. It has that bird's eye, kind of that bird's eye maple look. I think underneath, the piece underneath might even be prettier. It might even have less of these uh, imperfections. I've seen guys take and uh, fill these voids with um, like crushed, uh, you know what would look really pretty would be like crushed, um, what's that blue, turquoise, turquoise uh, with an epoxy in there. And you know, a little goes a long ways with that, but man, if you do it right, it can look really pretty. But isn't that something? Look at the swirls in it. And to have it from uh, Douglas fir, local tree, now that just makes it all the much better. That is something else. You see now why they call it red fur? Look how much red is in it. Just, it's, uh, it's not as red as a, like a giant sequoia, but uh, not too far from it. But the smell is just nothing like it. 
Boy, that's pretty too. Look at the sap pockets in there. That's so interesting. This especially in here is quite nice. I'm gonna let that one sit and stew on it for a while, see what I wanna do with it. I was over at my sister, the fresh peas house last night. She said something about a giant bowl. Might be an option, huh? But this piece is ours here. That is just gonna be just gorgeous. Hey, thanks for watching, I really appreciate it. If you wouldn't mind taking a moment and clicking the thumbs up. Of course, you know, we're always under heavy censorship from YouTube, I don't know why. But uh, so if you comment and click the thumbs up and share these videos, uh, it helps. I, um, I put a lot of effort into them for you guys, especially with this one with lights and camera angles so you can kind of get the experience and feel what it's like um, the best I can uh, so that it's entertaining and not just some guy putting a camera on a tripod. So I appreciate you guys supporting us. So thanks for watching. Keep us in your prayers. May God bless you and your families. And we'll see you guys on the next video.